Good evening. I'd like to uh, call to order the Cape Elizabeth uh, Board meeting for Tuesday, November 10th. Uh, first on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our next item on the agenda is um, adjustments, and I believe that there is one adjustment. One adjustment. We will eliminate executive session A personnel issue. Okay, that's number 11A. Moving on, approval of the October school board meeting minutes. Uh, first, well, let's take both of them: October 13th, which was a regular meeting, and October 19th. Oh my. <laughs> um, are there any adjustments to those uh, minutes? <clears throat> Seeing none, we'll move on to comments from our uh, high school representatives. Uh, good evening. Thank you for uh, having us back here. Um, you could I guess start with introductions. Okay. Um, uh, I'm Jeff Butterworth. I'm a senior at Cape Elizabeth High School. And this is Alicia Chang. She's a junior at Cape Elizabeth High School. We are the school board representatives. Um, we haven't got that much, uh, that many detrimental issues to talk about uh, this time around. There hasn't been anything uh, uh, amiss at the school uh, this month. So. We can only bring you good news. I'm, I know that's that's a terrible shock and a travesty, but <laughs> has to go wrong, right? Uh. Mr. Ely, are, are they aware that we're getting this? They are. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, at least something at least something is in order. Uh, well, I guess we'll start off. Um, the sophomore class uh, came up with an original fundraiser uh, that, that just commenced yesterday, um, and that is a uh, touch football, uh, and that, that is uh, a five to eight member team uh, tournament uh, between any, any sort of, any assortment of uh, players that get together throughout the school. Um, it's a fundraiser held by the sophomore class, and um, it was four dollars per person. Without um, without cost or uh, or any any expenditures, and so that all money made is profit to the sophomore class. Uh, this is uh, it's a good fundraiser for them, and it's a lot of fun for everyone else. Hopefully, it'll be safe as well. Uh, I don't think we can have too many injuries with just two hand touch. Um, this uh, this fall, uh, as you know, there there are three shows annually, three play productions uh, in the high school uh, put on by Mr. Mullen. And this year for the fall show, uh, we've decided to go with a student written play rather than a prepared piece. Uh, the show uh, that was written uh, is called Three Stacks of High Variety, and it was written by uh, senior Ben Weaver, um, who worked on it all this fall and uh, is, is beginning to see the fruits of his labor now. He also uh, has a lead role in the play, and um, it's, it's sort of a show about 1950s uh, variety shows on stage, uh, so it, it'll incorporate a lot of, uh, of the music of the era, swing and, and dancing and, and such. Um, the uh, instruction, the, uh, the direction is sort of co-witnessed uh, co by Mr. Mullen, but is mainly led by uh, junior Elizabeth Kelsey, and um, I am actually uh, the musical director for the show. Uh, there's a student band that's put together. We didn't hire a director this year, uh, but uh, we do have plenty of good music, so if you want to come down, uh, those shows will be on the 19th and the 20th uh, at the high school auditorium, uh, 7.30, I believe, uh, on the 19th and 8 o'clock on the 20th. <clears throat> um, yesterday, um, yesterday, the town council reps who were uh, recently elected 
uh, Matt Martin and Vince Faraday, both seniors, uh, met uh, with the town council as the co-members. Um, it was a productive meeting. Uh, not much was brought up by the students, uh, but the issue regarding the lot next door with the garage, uh, the public space was brought up uh, that with the idea that perhaps it, it might be turned into a youth center rather than just a, a park for the general community. Um, also, this past, uh, I believe this past Friday? No, um, on the 30th, just before Halloween, we, um, the SAC, uh, in a community service effort, uh, held a haunted house um, in the first grade wing of Pond Cove School. And uh, it, was, it was attended by the SAC members uh, from Cape Elizabeth High School, and we uh, scared some little kids, hopefully <laughs> let them have a good time. And uh, as it, it originated as a community service effort, uh, but we did end up making some profits off of it. Uh, the, the tickets cost 50 cents each, and uh, we shared profits with the middle school, who were, uh, which was holding a festival in the honor of Halloween. So um, Alicia has some notes she'd like to show you as well. Um, I just have a couple, couple things to add to what Jeff said. Um, the quarter ended sometime last week. I'm not really sure. Our first quarter ended, and report cards should be out um, any time now, I think. And we had a mock election in the high school for when um, there was the real election going on in our gym. We had one through the student body. And um, there was a good turnout for that, and a lot of people voiced their opinion on who they thought should be elected. And as you all know, fall sports are over, and winter sports will start November 16th. And that's about it. Are there any questions for Jeff or Alicia? Is it true that the uh, faculty football teams are putting the uh, slap on the student teams? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that may be what you hear from the faculty, but I'm sure you'd get a different story from the majority of the student body. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And comments from the middle school rep representatives, and also if you could introduce yourselves first. My name is Leslie Preddy, and I'm filling in for Amelia Wiggins, who is sick today. I'm, um, I'm Marianne Chapman uh, from the eighth grade. I'm going to be stating the seventh grade news in. Seventh graders are going to Kiev. We've cut down the price from $145 to $64. And the other thing is where there's a girls basketball has started. And I think that started this week. Um, the fifth grade went to Camp Ketcha for a day. And what they did was they did a lot of trust activities, kind of like people do in Chewankee. They did trust falls and a lot of other things so that they can trust their students. And the elections for fifth grade student council are coming up. And they'll be joining the student council, the eighth, seventh, and sixth graders for the rest of the year to see what it's like, to see if they want to run next year and to report to their school. Uh, the food drive for WMGX is going well, but it, and it's still going on right now. And um, it went on for the social, and we got a lot of cans and good items. Um, the eighth grade went to Chuanki yesterday. Um, I got some pretty good feedback from students. Some people didn't like it, but a lot of people did. Um, we um, also we were had a game at the elementary school Halloween party. Um, which was really fun for us and all the elementary school students. Um, the fifth and sixth graders had a social. Um, we made over $600. It was a really, it was a great success. Uh, a lot of people brought in canned goods for the food drive. Um, we wanted to thank um, Mrs. Croto and Mrs. Misho for putting on a breakfast for the graders while we had the MEAs last week. Um, it, I think it really lifted the students' spirits. Um, we are also finished with the Coastal Athletic sweatshirt sale. Um, we don't know too much about that yet. Um, 
the order should be, um, <laughs> I mean, we should um, be getting the sweatshirts and everything back to hand back to the students within a few weeks. Uh, that's about it. Okay, are there questions for Leslie or Marianne? Thank you very much, good job. We'll move on now to communications. Are there any? George. Yes. Uh, just a quick one, a note of thanks to uh, the middle school and the middle school staff and students uh, at the uh, presentation at their board workshop. I guess it was two weeks ago now. Um, it was great to see the students and teachers in action and get to talk to the teachers about their programs and uh, it was great. Uh, excitement uh, that's going on in the middle school, and I was really pleased to be there. I really enjoyed that. Kevin? Uh, the <clears throat> Cape Community Coalition has established a mini-grant program um, that will provide seed money for community service projects that tend to build community assets. Information will be forthcoming in our local paper and applications and details will be available in the various uh, offices of the schools as well as our community liaison officer and from coalition members. Uh, I think this is an exciting uh, opportunity for our students and seniors to use uh, to get some monies together to do some joint projects. And also, I had an opportunity to attend the fifth grade day at Camp Ketcher. I thought that was a very exciting time. Students and staff were highly enthusiastic. Uh, and while it appeared they were having fun, I know that there was a lot of learning going on there. OK. Other communications? Um, I have one communication. There has been some ongoing updates with regard to a legal matter. Um, Ann Ridge uh, versus the Cape uh, Elizabeth School Board. Um, that formal complaint ha was served on November 4th of 98, um, despite findings of no merit by both the Maine Human Rights Commission and the Maine Labor Relations Board. Uh, the complaint is asking, um, is asking for uh, specific relief in terms of nominal damages compensatory damages, punitive damages, declaratory and injunctive relief, attorneys' fees and costs, and other such relief as appears reasonable. Um, this, uh, the topic of the lawsuit, as well as the matter of uh, conflict of interest, uh, will be the topic of our um, executive session, which will uh, follow this uh, meeting. Other communications? Uh, we will move, now move on to the principal's report. Uh, I, I understand that the middle school assistant principal and principal um, are both unavailable this evening because of another um, school commitment. And so we'll start with uh, Tom from Pond Cove. Thank you. Yeah, good evening. I think the biggest news is that because the uh, Southern Maine Partnership could not recruit enough people to be in our school quality review team, which was supposed to start this week, we have to postpone that part of the process. I uh, talked to David Roof and uh, emailed him, and we've exchanged uh, dates and so on. So the new date will be, or the new dates, the end of January. That's starting, the uh, visiting team will come for five days, as we planned, starting Thursday, January 28th, and they'll be back the following week on February 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. I think the reaction at Pond Cove was we were prepared. We were prepared to do it um, starting next week, and I think we'll be better prepared in January. Um, we managed to do what we call a vertical slice a few weeks ago, that is collect work from a student in each class throughout the day. And, uh, we have that data. The teachers have been looking at it, not just in terms of the learning results and school quality review, but just to see what's going on in a colleague's classroom. Volunteers, parent volunteers from the Pond Cove 
a, a parents association were extremely helpful with that. It's not every school district that can round up a crew like that and to help with log logistical matters like copying and making sure the camera is in the right place and we're grateful for that. Um, curriculum news, this uh, magazine or journal comes from the uh, Lawrence Hall of Science at the University of California, Berkeley. It's a combination of uh, the university system, the FOSS program, and Delta Education that published the FOSS material. And in this month's issue, there was an article called Crayfish, the Main Event. And when we looked inside at Pond Cove in the Middle School, there was a two-page article about Ogden Williams' fourth grade class last year challenging some of the assumptions of the FOSS structures of life, namely crayfish um, kit. They wrote to the Lawrence Hall of Science and they emailed them and uh, in the beginning of this investigation we're using terms like we think the crayfish like, we think the crayfish hate, and the scientist and Lawrence Hall of Science got them to pursue the investigation and stop using those anthropomorphic terms and use things like we observed that and we concluded that. But I really wanted to point out the, the drawings of the crayfish, which I think are a testament not just to uh, Ogden science teaching, but to uh, Marie's art instruction. It's just, um, the detail is just really good and it reproduced really well. So hats off to Ogden for that. Um, we have been asked to look at ways of supporting children. That's one of the uh, school board goals this year. In addition to the reports you're going to be getting from their principals, a study group has formed um, under the direction of Becky Swift around just a literacy study group which teachers are attending voluntarily after school to talk about reading and writing in Pond Cove K through 4. They had their first meeting last week. I think 10 or 12 people came and they have two more meetings scheduled for December. I think it's this kind of uh, professional spirit that'll make a big difference at Pond Cove. You may recall this jacket that I brought last year. This is, um, this is year two of the reaping the rewards of the mediation program, which Sarah Berman has moved down to third grade, so that in the beginning of fourth grade, the mediators can go out on the Pond Cove playground. They get to wear these jackets and they have clipboards and when kids on the playground think or know they have a problem, they can approach uh, a mediator, fourth grader, and they agree to the rules, get their problems mediated. I think it's a great program, and uh, through the work of Sarah and parent volunteers, it's become a model that uh, you know, people call us from around the state. And one final thing, the uh, Pond Cove Parents Association had uh, an unusual meeting a couple of weeks ago. It occurred right after school to see if the meeting could attract both parents and teachers, and the subject was parental involvement at, at Pond Cove, and it was well attended. We debriefed at a faculty meeting uh, the following week. The teachers are very positive about it, and I hope to be able to build on that uh, parent interest and involvement through topics that come up from our school quality review. Tom, could you maybe just hold that jacket up again so that... Right up here. Yeah, I think you have to kind of hold it up in front of you. There you go. I'm not sure it could be seen. <laughs> Thanks. Are there questions, um, comments for Tom? Just, just about the, uh, I guess it was the survey that was that went around with the, the parent uh, Pankov mm -hmm. letter. Do you have results of that, or is that going to be put out? Um, I didn't bring it with me, but they were available at the meeting, and the uh, uh, Debbie Cushing had tabulated them, so it showed um, parental views on one on top on the same question and teacher views in the same. And on many questions, the uh, reaction was very, very similar. On some others, there were some differences. So I think probably it'll be a topic at another um, Pond Cove Parents Association meeting. That was a survey that the PCPA uh, used, used expert excerpts from a national PTA survey. Other questions, John? Uh, when will your assistant uh, be coming on board to help you as Monday. Well, it's coming Monday? Monday. Absolutely. She was in today doing some paperwork, so we know she's ready to go. Good. How many uh, sections do we have in K? How many sections? Two, three, four, five. How many do we have, Cynthia? Seven? Seven. 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 So five teachers, seven sections. 
So we're down to approximately 15.71 yep. students per section. So we're below the 18, right? Yep. Okay. Well below. 18 being the max. Right. Correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Other comments? Thank you, Tom. Uh, comments from, uh, or a principal's report from high school. Peter. I'd like to make sure that you all notice the advertising, uh, the, the new posters for the, uh, the fall production that Jeff already mentioned. Uh, I think it is unique to, to note that that is, uh, certainly with, with faculty advisorship, a student written, student directed, uh, musically directed. Uh, it's uh, uh, the both faculty members that uh, tend to supervise a lot of that type of activity. Uh, Dick, Dick Mullen and Norm Richardson have both said they've just been absolutely amazed at the, uh, the talent being demonstrated in this, that it's uh, far beyond uh, the years. Uh, so I look forward to that on the 19th and 20th. Alicia referred to the straw poll that uh, we conducted at the high school around election time. Uh, important also to note that we were very fortunate through the hard work of uh, history teacher Ted Jordan to uh, secure, a, it was our first uh, uh, full assembly that wasn't the opening day assembly. And uh, the day before uh, the elections, we were able to have, I'm sorry, uh, not the, the uh, not the day before the election, it was about four days before the election, it was the day before the straw poll. Uh, we were lucky to have uh, first district congressional uh, candidates, uh, Ross Connolly and Tom Allen, uh, who were willing to come and speak to the students in a uh, 55 uh, minute assembly. Uh, it was uh, conducted as a debate with student moderators, uh, again from uh, one of Mr. Jordan's government classes. Students had the opportunity to pass questions to the front uh, on three by five cards. The uh, government students were sitting in the front row. They screened the questions to see if there were repetitions uh, regarding a question that had already been asked and then passed uh, the questions on to the moderators uh, whereupon they were asked. It was uh, a very good uh, assembly. Both candidates uh, mentioned to me afterwards uh, uh, their very positive impressions of the way that the assembly went. Students uh, uh, handled it extremely well. I mentioned to you in the past uh, that we, this year's senior class, uh, as they were juniors taking the preliminary scholastic aptitude test, had qualified very well in the National Merit Scholarship, scholarship competitions. Um, but I thought I could give you specifics tonight. Uh, first of all, with the PSAT, the PSAT is the National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test. And they take that as juniors and then tend to find out uh, in the beginning of their senior year uh, whether any of them have qualified. The top 5% of scores nationwide, and there are over a, there are over a million uh, students who take uh, the PSAT, who sit for the PSAT, the top 5%, actually a little bit less than the top 5%, uh, are recognized as at least commended students uh, receiving letters of commendation by the PSAT slash NMSQT. Um, and the, approximately the top 2% of those students uh, are selected as semifinalists, National Merit Scholarship semifinalists, and asked to submit um, application materials when, uh, which will help uh, the corporation determine the finalists. Uh, truthfully, most of the semifinalists uh, do end up moving on to the finalist uh, status also. So if we keep that in mind, that the top 5% uh, are, are at least uh, commended, um, this year we had uh, 11 commended students and three semifinalists, a, a total of uh, 14 students, which is over 10% of our senior class are uh, competing at, the top, at better than the top 5% of the national the students that are uh, receiving uh, letters of commendation are Jer Clucci, Michael Dixon, Vince Faraday, Ali Garmi, Bill Gross, Megan Johnson, Matt Martin, Mike Monroe, Gretchen Spadinger, Cecily Upton, and Ben Weaver. The semifinalists are Nick Harris, Amy Palin, and Allison Cox. 
So I'd like to commend uh, all 14 uh, of those students. And then in addition, one of our students, Marian Tizon, uh, was recognized in the National Hispanic Recognition Program as a scholar finalist. Uh, this is an effort uh, at recognizing outstanding uh, students of Hispanic background. Uh, and as a recognized student, she will have, Marianne will have her name listed in a publication uh, uh, listing the names of all students selected as finalists uh, and distributed uh, already to approximately 1,500 colleges and universities. So I'd like to recognize uh, Marion Tizon's performance in that examination also. That was using the same, uh, the preliminary scholastic aptitude test as a qualifier. <clears throat> the recently, uh, our instrumental musicians and choral musicians have been auditioning for uh, various select choirs around the state. In fact, as I saw Norm Richardson at the end of the day today, he was at his mailbox and pulled out one of the notices and, and mentioned, oh, here's another audition. It seems like all I'm doing these days is auditioning. Well, we've had great success uh, with these auditions also. Um, back about, um, about almost a month ago now, or three weeks ago, uh, we had students auditioning for the All-State Jazz Band this is all state, not Southern Maine. Uh, there are 48 students that are selected altogether. Six of those students are from Cape Elizabeth. So one eighth of the students uh, in the whole state in the all state jazz band are from Cape Elizabeth. Their names are Jack Lombard, Nate Perry, Tim Butterworth, Nick Falk, Jamie Spaulding, and Chris Gagne. So that's an outstanding showing. <coughs> In the Southern Maine concert band auditions, again, way out of proportion uh, to the numbers that are in the total group, we have 22 students who, who um, were selected as a result of their auditions to take part in the upcoming Southern Maine concert band. They are Kelly Reed, Elizabeth Geyer, Melissa Yashua, Gloria White, Deborah White, Megan Johnson, Mindy Christensen, Marion Tizon, Matt Christensen, Melissa Kirstead, Amanda Gann, Mike Dixon, Laura Efron, Allison Lunt, Tom Alberry, Sam Lilly, Jack Lombard, Tim Butterworth, Jeff Butterworth, Jamie Spaulding, Chris Falk, and Nate Perry. Again, an outstanding showing from our instrumental musicians. Now, I have to apologize to our choral musicians. Uh, all of the choral musicians uh, that went to the Southern Maine auditions qualified also, but I did not have their names as I left school today. I will make that up to them in next week's, uh, next month's report. Athletically, uh, as has been mentioned, our seasons have come to a close, a very successful close, I think, in all respects. Uh, commendations to the coaches of cross country, field hockey, soccer. Uh, they did an outstanding job again, as did our students. Some heartbreaking losses, uh, but uh, never a doubt about the character of the teams that were playing. Uh, one individual is still going at this point. Uh, as you may know, in individual sports, uh, you, it is possible to go beyond the state competition to the New England competition uh, if a student places high enough in whatever that sport is. Jess Jordan. Uh, will be going this Saturday to the Manchester, New Hampshire area to compete in the New England Cross Country uh, Championships as a result of her very strong showing in the state meet uh, a week and a half ago. Uh, so we wish her very good luck. Finally, uh, a note uh, not regarding student achievement, but a, a planned change that I would like to, uh, that I'm planning on uh, bringing to your attention. Uh, we in the past uh, several years have had graduation planned for Friday evening, usually the Friday before uh, the uh, last week of, of school. Each year when we have done that, we've played lottery uh, basically with uh, the state athletic tournaments that uh, come up that weekend. Uh, the, the, the reason I say we play lottery is if our team is going to the state tournament, it is always the 
Saturday of that, um, of that weekend, uh, which would eliminate um, uh, any of the students who were participating in that athletic event from uh, an opportunity to participate in project graduation. In checking with uh, Keith this year, it once again was true that uh, June 11th, our, uh, our initial, uh, originally roughed in graduation date, would, uh, would run that same risk. And I believe that there are uh, very good chances that, that um, some of our spring teams are going to be involved in the state tournaments uh, at that point. I, it's always hard to predict, but I think that uh, it's, it's uh, much more than just a, uh, a slim possibility. Um, also, each year, and last year uh, I know I heard from several people, the fact that we hold the graduation right after school on, a, on the uh, Friday has prevented a very important part of, of uh, a high school graduation ceremony, and that is the recognition that it is not just the high school that is graduating these students, especially in a community like ours where the students are uh, very often here from kindergarten through 12th or at least early uh, elementary through 12th. Uh, it should be a celebration for uh, the whole faculty, and uh, the way we have scheduled it in the past uh, has not allowed for that kind of participation. We're, we're the elementary school middle, uh, and middle school, to some extent, are still in class while we're beginning the graduation ceremony. For those reasons, I would like to shift the uh, graduation from Friday the 11th to the afternoon of Sunday the 13th, um, and wanted to bring that to your attention tonight. Questions or comments for Peter? Peter, on the calendar issue, um, I wasn't aware of it until I got a letter in the mail today that there might be, we might be hearing about a change in that. Um, and we talked about it very quickly as we were walking in here. And I guess my feeling is once the calendar is published, we would really need to have a public discussion on changing it mid year. Um, I had thought. You know, we did propose a calendar and then sort of repropose it a month later that we were okay with the sporting events for June. I remember when graduation was going to be, we were going to get out of school a, a week earlier. I thought, Keith, we were going to be okay with the June 11th. The, the championships would be more like the June 5th weekend. I sort of, I remember this discussion. With it was uh, they are, uh, they are took a baseball, softball, and uh, the New England competition track, of which we very well could have some people involved in that, would be that Saturday the 12th. So, so, so lacrosse and tennis across, are on the 5th. Boys and girls across lacrosse, and tennis, and the regular track is all on the 5th. Okay. Many schools are going to the Sunday graduations because of that same reason. That the I guess I wouldn't be opposed to looking at a different graduation, you know, a Sunday or whatever. But I would want to do it as we have our calendar discussions in the in the spring and be sure that there's time for input from a lot of people on that issue. And I have heard from teachers throughout the system that they would like to be able to go. Either it's you know, it, it would be nice. Um, so I'm open to that. I'm just very hesitant to change the calendar at this point in the year, or if we are going to, that we at least give public notice and have a discussion where people can come and give their input before we make a final decision. I, I did uh, raise it, at, and, and uh, the reason for needing to move quickly became uh, was project graduation, the, the need for the parents that were uh, coordinating that event to lock something uh, in. I did mention it uh, at a, a September, uh, no, I'm sorry, October project graduation meeting to the parents that were there, but I, you're right, it's not a, it wasn't at a, a public hearing. And then when um, uh, they were uh, coming to me and, and saying, we've got to set a date, I, I was uh, thinking, well, it, it certainly makes more sense. I was not aware that it had to be, uh, that that was a, 
uh, I, I guess I looked at that almost like um, one of the things that we were discussing at one point with the calendar was whether we might try to move the second quarter, the end of the second quarter before the, um, uh, before the Christmas break so that we could have semester exams before the, the Christmas break. And uh, we didn't end up doing that, but I was under the impression that those types of things, uh, the events that happen uh, in the calendar could be changed, uh, whereas the, the outline of the calendar, certainly vacations and, and uh, professional days and that type of thing, but I, I, yeah. I may be mistaken on that. I guess the practice that has always been that we'd never change the calendar during, you know, once it's been published. Um, certainly snow days, things move around the end of school, but certainly graduation has never moved, even when we were I guess there was one year we had a lot of snow days and we were worried about get the seniors getting their days in. Does that make sense? And we've talked about they maybe went to school on a Saturday. I don't know. Keith is nodding at me like, yes. But um, we had to do some accommodations just to meet that graduation day that, that had thrown some problems into the situation. So I'm, I'm speaking for myself. I would not want to move graduation unless we post it and have a discussion that we are making a change in the calendar. The next regular meeting would be December 7th. What kind of a hardship would it be if you were to delay your decision till after that? Um, I don't know uh, for sure. I know that right now, they, uh, I think the Project Graduation Committee has uh, gone ahead and, and booked the Sunday uh, night, um, but um, I don't know whether we you know, would be closed out of the other date at that point or not, I know that there was a lot of anxiety about um, uh, delaying, uh, but I don't know whether that was based on fact or just kind of supposition that things are going to get tight. There is, Peter, there is, um, I, I, I sensed that there was um, some sentiment, again, this is not a, a legi legitimate topic for this meeting right now, but um, I had the sense that there was some sentiment that um, other board members felt also uncomfortable without getting some public input. Um, it seems as though the December meeting is one option. If there are some t pressing timelines, um, we, we also have a, a meeting of the board next week. It's a, a fairly busy workshop evening, uh, but certainly if, if there were compelling reasons, I would think that we could per perhaps get that on the the, the uh, board agenda so that there could at least be public input and people would be advised that that was a topic. Uh, is, I would be glad to do that. Is it your thought that uh, the 17th would give an, enough time to uh, let it be known that, there's, that there is a public uh, what we have to opportunity? Mary? We'd have to post it, and, and tomorrow's the holiday, so that we, I mean, and there's not going to be a long period of notification because probably yeah. the earliest that people would would even know about it would be Friday, and whether that gives them time for a Tuesday night meeting, I don't know. And the other issue is that that is not a televised meeting, if that's... And it's also that's not an official board meeting, it's a workshop. We can post it as an official board meeting with an agenda topic, but I think with our workshop only being a week out this month instead of two weeks out, it's a little close. Um, and the following week is Thanksgiving week, so probably not a good week too, and no school week. So then you're up into December anyway. Yeah. Again, with I think with compelling reasons, the you know we could certainly think about that. It's 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 just another option. Um, certainly, and, and, and I think you're hearing not a preferred option. And certainly, what we could do is um, uh, leave the reservation where it stands, and and then if we have to change it, we have to change it. I I do personally believe that the reasons for a change are very compelling. Uh, I think that the uh, students not being able to participate, the chance of students not being able to participate in project graduation is a very strong one. Uh, and I think it outweighs individual, you know, conflicts and so forth, but, uh, but that's my personal uh, view. And so, I, you know, we could, we could do it in December if that, uh, uh, if that would give. Obviously the, stu obviously, the students probably are aware of the change because such things travel fast. Any, any response from the students? No, and, and I can't say that there has been, uh, I talked with the uh, senior class uh, in the course of talking about their decision regarding project graduation and did mention that, you know, that we were looking at that. And they, uh, I, I had worded it that it would, uh, 
uh, having the graduation ceremony on Friday uh, would put students in a, in a, uh, uh, a decision-making mode where they would have to decide whether they were going to go with their team to uh, the state tournament or go on project graduation. And several hands shot up immediately and said, Mr. Dawson, that's no choice. You, of course you would go with the team uh, and you miss project graduation, which is a shame, but it's not a choice. Uh, and I think they're... Uh, I think they're right. Uh, I didn't hear anybody, uh, nobody said uh, that, um, uh, you know, that they thought that was uh, a bad idea, but we weren't talking about that specifically. We were talking about the possibilities for project graduation. The, um, from uh, parental feedback, I've received uh, probably three to four comments that were very positive about it, thinking that we had to... Um, um, weigh the, the tournaments very heavily and, and allow students the chance to participate. Uh, and I did receive uh, one uh, concern uh, based on a uh, personal conflict uh, that, that they would have if we moved into a Sunday. Keith, my recollection from a conversation last year, the year before, was that there is also a, an issue in terms of whether students who have already graduated are eligible then to participate in a... No, that's not... That's okay. There, there, there are several schools that will be graduating the week before we do. And so the fact that they've graduated is not an issue? Right. Okay. John, is there a policy that gives us guidelines whether we as a board have the, the final decision making, whether this happens? Does the principal have that prerogative with his project? project? project graduation to do that. It's the responsibility of the board to set the calendar for the school. That's what I thought. And, and, and I think that's, that's the rub right there. And as, as yeah. Beth says, um, having set a calendar, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a sense that we need to uh, be uh, informed about, <coughs> one, the options. Uh, probably hear the compelling reasons that you, that, that you cited earlier um, and give the public some opportunity for some input so that we can um, uh, weigh the, the need to change something that's, that's already been established. Mm -hmm. I, I do think that uh, given the timing right now that we would have, um, that anybody planning visitors for graduation and so forth would have plenty of opportunity, sure. but that's, and I realize that's not the, uh, the, the main And again, point. I think that the, the purpose in establishing it as a topic for um, a, a board uh, meeting would be so that the public would have an opportunity, yep. and certainly at that time we'd, we'd want to listen to all of the, the thinking and the, uh, and the reasons for the change. Yeah. And Pete, just so I understand, your thought is graduation should probably permanently be considered on a Sunday. Yes. This is not just... Um, it will come up almost every year uh, unless we year. change our calendar dramatically so that it's not even close to the, uh, the uh, regional and state tournaments. Yeah, I think we sort of discussed this a little bit in the calendar discussions for the last couple of years and the pros and cons of a Sunday versus a Friday and families traveling and those things. Mm -hmm. So um, it might spur us on to really discuss that. Other um, questions or comments? I have a couple. Um, how did the uh, Spanish exchange go? I never... Oh, um, I, th <coughs> I thought it went, uh, this first half of it went extremely well. Uh, students were well received. The uh, host families did a beautiful job. Um, and I think they're all really looking forward to the second half, uh, the, the visit to Spain. And that's in February, right? That's in February. Um, while on exchanges, <laughs> The French uh, exchange uh, for which you had granted permission uh, has, we do now have a um, uh, cooperating school, but uh, we, are, we are going to use that school, but postponing it for a year. So we'll come back to you with information. They, uh, we did not hear about the uh, cooperating school until two weeks ago. We were feeling that that was a little late to really get things rolling, and it turned out that, that um, their uh, coordinating teacher was feeling the same way and said, you know, we'd actually prefer to have this next year if, uh, if we could. And so uh, David Perry came to me and said that he thought it would make more sense to have it next year rather than rush it and uh, make mistakes. So that will be happening uh, in the 99-2000 school year. That was my next question. <laughs> 
but the Spanish exchange, I think the first half went extremely well, very positive students, and they had a good experience, and uh, now our students are looking forward to the return. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. George, uh, would you just clarify about uh, the public hearing on the calendar change? Is that going to be next Tuesday or? I don't. I think that um, I think that's still undecided. Okay. Um, but there would be there would be public notice. Um, it's it sounds as though our preference is to is to have that as part of the December board meeting. There again, recognizing that if if Peter discovers that there's some urgent need for us to, to do that sooner than we would try to accommodate that. Okay. Uh, moving on to uh, committee reports, starting with the finance subcommittee. Keith. Uh, we met briefly tonight before uh, the board meeting. Uh, Kevin uh, and, and Cynthia presented some information about the funding of the uh, paths, the Portland Arts and Technology High School. Uh, there's going to be some changing probably in the way that things are going to be funded there. Uh, in the past, we've basically just had to pay a percent of, of uh, some new equipment and new programs expenses without having to pay any sort of tuition. Uh, the state has been changing uh, the uh, reimbursement of, of, of those programs, and right now, uh, Portland School District is paying about a million dollars, uh, uh, maybe more than they should in, in terms of, of the funding of that school. Um, so I think uh, in this current budget year, we're paying about $8,000, uh, and, and it's, it's potentially going to go as high as $75,000 per year, uh, with much of that being re uh, up to upwards of 80% of that being eventually reimbursed back from the state. So we'll. Uh, We'll keep you posted on how that goes. We're, we have to move on this at our December meeting uh, to get the process going so they can change their funding formulas. Okay, thank you. Uh, policy subcommittee, Kevin. Uh, policy subcommittee has met twice since the last board meeting, October 15th, November 9th. Uh, a lot of our time has been <coughs> used, uh, with Peter and Sharon Merrill explaining the uh, the new method that they've developed of class ranking for our senior classes. Uh, we've essentially agreed that that's a policy that belongs at the building level and will stay at the building level uh, for the time being. Uh, other areas that we're looking at are uh, continue to be the leave of absence and the uh, whether or not there is going to be any consideration for allowing sick days, paid sick time for adoption leaves. Those are still under active conversation. We're reviewing a lot of documents, contracts. Um, so there have been real, no real decisions on that at this point. That's pretty much it. Philosophically, I think we've, we've come to an agreement that um, where possible, unless it's a system-wide issue, we do not want to adopt system-wide policies to address building issues. Uh, leaving our administrators the flexibility they need in order to run their buildings. I'm certain that there may be some things that will come up in the future which we, for which we may revisit particular situations, but I think philosophically that's where we are. The next meeting is December 10th at 8.30 a.m. in the council chambers. Just a question, um, Kevin, how is that time working, the 8.30? A.M. Um, are there, are there, are you getting the board representation that you would like? Yeah, we've had unanimous um, presence at the last three meetings. I haven't been there. Well, I'm talking. <laughs> I, so I know it hasn't been everybody. Oh, everybody. No, I'm talking about policy subcommittee. On the policy. <laughs> All of the other committee members have been present, which is, is basically Jen, Jen, you, and Beth. Beth. Correct. Keith, have you, have you been able to no. make those? And John, is that? I just, I just bring it up. It's, it's a time, and we've struggled with this. We struggled with it last year. It was early, and that presents some problems. I know for myself, I, you know, I would love to be a part of those discussions 
and the more board members that can be a part of those discussions, it tends to um, expedite moving through the policies. I guess I would just ask that maybe we, um, I would make the recommend, the request that we look again at the time. I know that 8.30 is, is really too late for me. An earlier time, I, I think, was worth well for folks. Something to think about, um, I'd ask you to. Um, continuous improvement team time usage. Um, we met, the date was, Jen, do you recall? Do I know what it was? Uh, I know when the next meeting is. It was last week. We met last week um, and had an interesting discussion. It's one of those meetings that um, our focus is to, on how to best use instructional time. Um, we have a hard time using our time because it's very short and we have lots of things to talk about. Uh, so it's usually a pretty lively discussion as it was last time uh, with an update uh, from Tom on some updates around uh, some schedule experimentation at the middle school, some thoughts around scheduling, and some uh, basically some uh, feedback from the high school around scheduling alternatives. Uh, we've, we've decided to broaden uh, the discussion again to not just use it as an update on those uh, initiatives, but rather uh, to dig in and look more at teacher time, uh, look at uh, our demands, the academic and other demands that we place on the system, uh, the length of meetings, uh, PET uh, commitments, um, uh, sort of asking the question, the question uh, being, uh, what makes teaching the way it should be too difficult right now with the scheduling and the demands that we have? I think it's sort of a nice reflective question. Again, some uh, talking about calendaring, scheduling. The next meeting is December 14th from 4 to 5 p.m. Update on the superintendent search, Beth. Thank you. We have um, produced a timeline for the superintendent uh, search. The dates are somewhat tentative, but there are some very uh, We'll be running this Sunday and then two consecutive Sundays in December with December 31st being the deadline. Um, on November 17th, there's an opportunity for all community members from 6.30 to 7.30 in the high school library to give their input on qualifications that we should be looking for. Um, in a new superintendent, we would invite everyone to come. We did hold a similar meeting for teachers, and teachers who were not able to make that meeting, please feel free to come on the 17th. We are all also asking for both teacher and community volunteers to serve on the screening committee. The heavy time commitment will be the last two weeks in January when we would be interviewing hopefully eight to 12 applicants. Um, community members who are interested, please send a letter of intent to the superintendent search committee care of the superintendent's office. Um, please send a letter of intent to the superintendent's office. We would really um, like to have some community members involved. And um, if anyone is interested in seeing the timeline, please contact Mary Bruns at the superintendent's office for a copy. And any questions, please feel free to call me. I am going to send a copy of the timeline to be put on our web page. Great. So that Thanks. will be available there. Uh, Beth, there will be copies of that. Tuesday night, right, at the, yes, seven, at the workshop, too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Beth, um, did you mention, I, th I think that you did, but the distraction was, um, was too much for me, uh, that uh, people do, uh, teachers and the public, 
can certainly attend the meeting on the 17th, but as well submit comments Sorry, in writing. I didn't say something about in writing. Yes, please come on the 17th, or if you cannot make that meeting, please feel free to send something in writing to the search committee, again, care of the superintendent's office. Okay, thank you. Unfinished business uh, policy, second reading. Kevin? Last month, we introduced first reading the Family and Medical Leave administra uh, uh, for policy as well as the uh, administrative guidelines for both. There were no suggestions for changes. <laughs> there were no suggestions for changes at the policy subcommittee meeting, so I would